So I'm going to show you how events work. Often I ask people in interview questions what the difference between a delegate and an event is. And a lot of people don't understand this. In fact, I had a hard time understanding it. But it is actually very straightforward and simple. And so I'm going to show that to you now. But one thing you need to keep in mind is that you need to have the delegate videos, at least a few, probably four to six of them, under your belt. Uh, you should be grappling with these concepts or wrestling with them, as I tell my students. If you are my student, then I give you exercises based on all this stuff. And if you're just out there in YouTube land, watching this stuff won't help you as much as taking it, typing it up with me, uh, changing things, experimenting, that kind of thing. That's that's how I learn, and I call it wrestling with the concepts. Anyway, so delegates versus events. So let me, um, my classic example is train signal. Something we're hopefully all familiar with. Uh, I actually came upon an intersection without a train signal and lost my life to it. But uh, fortunately, I was uh, a little bit too late and the train came before I could get in front of it. Anyway, class train signal. I'm going to throw an action out here. Remember, action is just a delegate. Delegate void action. Uh, no arguments, returns nothing. I'm going to say uh, trains are coming. All right, and let's make this public. So we have this train signal, and uh, I'm going to make a method, public void, uh, here comes a train. And then, you know, this is like all examples I do here on the screen. I try to save a lot of space and do them all in one screen. I'm going to contrive this a little bit, pretend there is a ton of logic here to get the lights going on the train signal and to take the bars down and all that kind of stuff. But in the end... We want to uh, tell people who are interested in this trains are coming uh, thing that, that a train is a coming. So I'm going to say trains are coming. Just like that. And remember, trains are coming is an action. And since it's an action, I can use this syntax upon it, and the compiler just turns around and says invoke. But since it's a delegate, we wish to treat it like a method because that's kind of one of the conveniences or feel good things about delegates. So trains are coming. All right, I'm going to make a, a car class here, and uh, let's let's give it a constructor. Whoops, constructor, and its constructor will take a train signal, T. Well, let's let's spell it out. We should be professionals. And then in here, I'm going to say train signal dot. Hey, when the trains are coming, whenever they invoke this this delegate. All right. Uh, Stop the car. All right. Now, let's stop the car. Well, since I'm adding it to a delegate, it has to be a method. In fact, I'm going to make it a private method. But it's still okay because in the scope of this constructor, oops, in the scope of this constructor, the constructor can uh, can see stop the car. Okay. So that's kind of interesting. I still have control. I'm I'm allowing this train signal to invoke my private method, but I'm still in control here because my private method is seen within a method of the car class and so that this is all legit all right anyway here I'm just gonna say screech sure maybe you like to speed up when you see trains it depends on how much you you uh, value your life anyway so when when a trains are coming I want to screech to a stop okay so hopefully this let me uh, scroll out a little bit and I hope you have the video tuned up to HD so you can see all this. I have this train signal as a delegate reference. And whenever a car is interested, and it could be some other class too, it's, we could have several classes that plus equals to this delegate. But essentially, when somebody's interested, they say, hey, that delegate, add me on to the list of subscribers. This is .NET's way of doing the observer pattern, if that has any meaning to you. You can go look up Gang of Four books, or the I enjoy the Heads First Design Patterns book, excellent book. Um, but anyway, this is the observer pattern. This is the way to do it in .NET. We are observing this train signal, and when something happens, the train signal will notify us via our method here that will invoke. Okay, so let's go down to main, and let's do something interesting here. In fact... Let me split this. Uh, well, no, I won't. Okay, let's just go with it. Okay, my conscience got the best of me. And here, here you can see I've, I've made two files just so we can see on the screen at the same time this train signal in this car. Okay, so now I'm here in the main class and uh, I'm going to make a train signal, train signal, 
train signal, new train signal, nothing out of the ordinary there. And then I'm going to say uh, new, and this is this, just bear with me for now. I'm going to say new car train signal, and let's do that five times. All right, now remember a delegate. A delegate keeps track of, of who's subscribing to it. So when I instantiate this car, let me just trace through this. F11. Uh, oh, and that goes over quite nicely. Let's bring that back. Uh, F11. New up the train signal. New car. And remember, the car here adds on to the trains that come in delegate. Notice right now it's null. There's no subscribers. But F11. And it adds itself onto this delegate. Now remember, a delegate references two things from the previous videos. It references the object in which to invoke the method on, which would be this object. And then it also keeps track of the actual method address. So since that delegate is keeping track of, of this object, I can come back out here. Notice I don't stuff, I don't say car C gets new car. I just knew up the car and I don't need to worry about it because train signal has the trains are coming which is referencing this. So the garbage collector won't come along and, and eat this thing up. Anyway, I'm going to new up these cars and this actually isn't too interesting. We need to tell the train signal that something's coming. So, so I'm going to do that. I'm going to say train signal dot here comes a train. All right. And then when we call this method, this method has all this logic that you know theoretically is there but then in the end it needs to it needs to notify all the subscribers hey there's a train coming and you can do whatever you want but there's a train coming that's the job of a train signal not to just turn on the lights and put the bar down but to I don't know somehow notify people maybe text message or uh, who knows I don't care anyway I'm gonna F10 on this F10 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 new up these cars and all these cars are now subscribed. They are each one is observing the train signal. And then I say, here comes a train, which goes and does our invisible logic, but then in the end it invokes this delegate, this action. And everyone subscribed to this action uh, will will receive the message. So I'm gonna F ten over this because I don't well, we can F eleven, why not? F eleven, here's the first car stopping, here's the next car stopping, here's the next car stopping. There's four of them, I believe. And we come back out, here's all the output screen. Okay. Um, I'm going to F11 and uh, step back out to main, and then we're done. All right. That's the basic gist of the the observer pattern. At least how we do it in C sharp. We if, uh, anyway. Um, just for fun, let's let's do a few more of these. Here comes a train. Here comes a train. Here comes a train. CW. Just put some new lines in here. Make the output interesting. Run it. And each time. All the cars want to stop, even though they've already stopped. Anyway, yada yada. yada. So there's there's the beginning of the observer pattern. I'm going to get into events and how events are related to de delegates, but we need this foundation first.